Um, so you'll see, hopefully, yes, a little bit of me in the corner there. When I when I open up the presentation, that inlay box uh, should go away. All right, I have one minute left on my on my watch, so I want to give every chance for everybody to show up. No, <laughs> if they show up late, it's not a big deal either. I'm looking at the, I don't think that clock back there works. All right, I should yeah. not look at that <laughs> clock. <laughs> the second hand stays the same spot every time. Oh, it went backwards there. Oh, all right. I'm going to ignore that clock, go off my watch. All right, so, so I've got uh, uh, 2.25, so let's get started here. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Nem Schlecht. You're here for Maximizing SMS for Developers and DBAs. I've given this talk a few times, so hopefully I don't go too quickly or whatnot. Please, please interrupt me with questions. I have zero problem with that. Um, we're here to share knowledge. Um, that's the whole point of all of this. Thank you to the sponsors. I know this is now the 1700th time you've seen the slide today or whatever, um, but really these events do not happen without the sponsors. They pay for a lot of the meals. They pay, help pay for the venue. You're here for free. Um, if you go look at any other training, it's expensive. Um, so it's nice that we have these events and that we have the sponsors. Um, plus, you get some uh, great door prizes. Make sure you stick around. Typically, you have to be there to win it, um, especially for the bigger prizes. Um, I know it's tempting to take off and leave, but uh, um, it is nice to stay at the end. And do give these vendors a little bit of your time if you can. Um, sit down, get a business card listen to a little bit of what they do and see if that can maybe help you out in your usual career or work or whatever you're doing. All right, again, thanks to the sponsors. They're looking for sponsors for this fall. Um, they're also looking for people to attend their meetings here for the Minneapolis chapter. I'll give a little bit about myself. I am the Fargo chapter leader, so I'm looking for speakers. I'm looking for sponsors. <laughs> um, I doubt any of you are going to come up Fargo ways, but if you do, Make sure to make a note of me, shoot me an email or something along those lines, um, and uh, come on, stop by to one of our monthly meetings. It'd be awesome. Uh, who here is going to Summit? Oh, we've got a few hands. Okay, I'm going to Summit too. So come find us. Let's all get together and hang out because we're all from the Midwest or whatnot. So, um, or we've at least met each other. So uh, if you haven't been to Summit, it is like the ultimate SQL week. Um, you get a little bit tired of it actually all bit by the end of it by Friday You don't want to look at a database. You don't want to think you just want to go and like watch Beavis and Butthead or something Or like cops like something just filter out all the knowledge you gain because you just learn too much So um, it's it's always but it's always an awesome event um, It's a great time if you can make it out to summit sometime Please do so if you want to make it out to summit and you get a lot of resistance Actually uh, who here knows who Brent Ozar is? All right, lots of many, many hands. Good. There. If you go, Brent Ozer has a great little spiel about go to your bosses with why you should go to Summit. Um, and it's, uh, I almost succeeded one year with that. Not quite. It was still too, too expensive, but I almost got my company to pay for me. So that's a good method. And afterwards, we have the after party out of GameWorks at the Mall of America. Uh, free food and drinks, and plus you mingle with whoever comes out there. A lot of the speakers do attend that. So if you uh, um, want to come out, mingle some more. Uh, it's always a fun time. Although usually I'm too tired to attend, I'll, I'll fully admit that. All right, a little bit about myself, as I just mentioned. I'm the Fargo Pass chapter leader. I am an old school Unix hack. I was a Unix sysadmin for years, and so I was also a MySQL DBA for years. I'm a recent convert to SQL Server, just the last few years here. Um, but I do love it. I, and I tell you what. And all the communities that I've been with, this is by far the best technical community out there, um, that, the one that exists for SQL Server. 
Uh, if you can remember NEMWS1, that was both my Twitter handle and that at gmail.com is my email address. If you have any questions, shoot me a tweet, shoot me an email. I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you and to try to answer anything you got for me. All right, um, so, uh, I'm limited on time. Usually I have 70 or 90 minutes to do this. So I'm gonna, I only got 60, so I'm gonna try to go a little quick. So I'm gonna skip some of this. One, one of my main things on this is uh, uh, make sure stop modifying yourself for your programs. Modify your programs for yourself. Stop telling yourself, oh. I have a CSV file, so I'm going to use Excel. No, if you have a CSV file, you should be using PowerShell most likely. Especially if you have 100 CSV files, you better be using PowerShell because Excel, too much work. Um, the other thing is always try to fix the next problem. Don't just fix the current problem. So I talk a little bit about that in my talk as we go along. All right, I'm going to be talking about, in general, some stuff that's in SSMS. It's been there for a long while, but you may not even know about. Some of it's new. Um, the SSMS, geez, some of you don't know this, SMS used to always be tied to the database server version. So if you're running SQL Server 2008 R2, you were running SSMS 2008 R2. Um, that was the last one, actually, that they had like that. But the, if they would not be able, if there was a bug in SSMS, it was not fixed until the next version of the database came out because they were so tied together. Luckily, they've been, they've been branched off. SSMS is now based off of uh, Visual Studio, and so there's a much, much faster, rapider and uh, development cycle to it. They're coming out with new versions of this every couple of months, which is great, because they're adding a lot of fixes. Um, how many of you are running SSMS version 17 that you know of? All right, good. How, how fast is that launch for you, right? You double click on, on your screen, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> you launch it, and then you go get a coffee, because it takes forever. Good news is, just announced, SSMS version 19, so it's a little ways away from actually being released, is half the size of 17. So I don't know what they did. I don't know. When you remove something by half, like if I was cut in half, that'd be pretty significant, and I would be very different. <laughs> um, so I don't know what they did to cut SSMS in half, um, but I'm just happy because it, it's way too slow right now. All right, some stuff that you can add to SSMS that will make it even cooler and more productive. And um, a quick look, we're not going to have a whole lot of time, but just a quick look at SOS, SQL Operations Studio. So this is the tool that Microsoft is somewhat ramping up to be the replacement for SSMS. Although at the pace that it's going, it's going to be years and years. So I don't know when that's going to happen. Yes? So is it expected that all the tips that you're giving us would work for various versions of SSMS or only for SSMS? They should work for most versions, I will say. The ones where there's a caveat, I'll let you know. So um, almost all these, um, and actually I have some, I have, I have one plugin that only works with 2008 R2 SSMS. Mm -hmm. And so I still have a copy of that laying around so I can run that one plugin. I know it sucks, but like uh, nobody's developing it. It does what I need it to do. Uh, what do you do, you know? So um, I, I'm, I'm very much a proponent of, uh, I don't care if it works and gets the job done, then do it that way, you know. And lots of demos. All right, first thing I'm going to show you here is quick launch. As soon as my mouse wants to respond. So, of course, you know, you can all read this, right? This is all perfectly, right? You all read, no, you can't? What? How many of you have been to a presentation today where the presenter did this and you wanted to throw something? I don't see any hands, but I'm assuming one of you did, right? All right. In version 16 on of SSMS, if you go up to the quick launch bar, which is way up in this upper right-hand corner, quick launch, you can do control Q to get to it. And you can type in, I just type in PRES, there's a presentation mode in SSMS. Now, a lot of you are wondering, like, why are you giving me this NEM? I'm not a presenter. Well, at some point, somebody's going to shoulder surf you, right? And if they're doing this over your shoulder, right, it's nice if you can just make it so they can read it. So present on changes all the fonts, including the UI, so everything is bigger. Right? So next time you go to a talk and they're to get the tiny text, be like, uh, can you just go hit the present on? Yes, Peter. Present edit. Right here, I have... Uh, I use the hack font, and uh, there's not a whole lot of settings here. And I will say this isn't 100%. Like, like the grid mode is still kind of tiny. It used to be the grid mode came up tiny, 
you'd restart SSMS after you turn presentation mode, and then it would come up nice and big, and that doesn't work anymore. So they're still a little bit, they're still working on it a little bit. Um, but yes, you can modify the fonts just by going to present edit, and this is what comes up. Now, of course, to turn it off, you type in present off, right? Uh, edit on. Now, unfortunately, and I did actually complain, I'm serious, I was at Summit last year, and I went to one of the talks, the head of the SSMS development team was there, and I was like, dude, you got to change this. Um, Oops, I'm even typing it in wrong here. Restore. Restore default fonts. That switches you back. Because that's intuitively obvious, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we just have to deal with things, you know, so. All right, and there is no present off. It is restore default fonts. And I mentioned that it used to be a restart used to work. All right, who here uses the template browser? Two and a half hands. I'm going to count you. Oh, maybe I'll count you as a full. All right. Three hands. Three hands. Ah, oh, all right. That's good because most of you don't know what I'm even talking about then. So in SSMS, if you go to View, there's the Template Explorer. And there is a ton of stuff in here. Do you remember how to create a link server or remove it? What do you usually do? You Google that stuff, right? It's built into SSMS already. You go to the template browser, add a link server. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just do a simple one here. Double click on it. There it comes up. There's the code to add a link server. Now you may look here and go, well, wait a second, then. What is this weird stuff here? The server name, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't look like, S, like SQL code. In fact, it's highlighted in red. Yeah, so that is a fillable template field. And you can put these into your own code. The format is um, the what you want to be the, the prompt. So in this case, server name, the type, sysname, and then a default value, in this case, local. If you notice, there's two server names here. So this will only prompt for it once and fill it in wherever there's a server name. And to do that, it's a little funky, control, shift, M. Let me pull up here. Ah, I forgot to run my arrow stuff. All right, here we go. Control Shift M. Come on, it's not zooming. Huh? You should be working. Huh? All right, let me do zoom it instead. Huh? Sorry, a little hard to read. All right. So, you see server name. I pointed that one out. So, any of these fields that you define in there, do control shift M, brings it up, tells you what the parameter is, the type is, and it will automatically fill in the default value for it. In this case, I'm not going to do local. I'm going to do I'm going to do St. Paul. Even though that's not a very good uh, not a very good server name. That's what I'll do. Hit OK. St. Paul, St. Paul. So it goes through your code and replaces everything with, with that. So if you have a piece of SQL code that you run often, A, create your own templates. My This admin here, these are all my own templates. And by the way, I don't have it uploaded yet. I apologize. I will get it uploaded tonight. If you go out to the SQL Saturday Minnesota page, and you go out to the speaker session, you see the download link, I will give you all of my templates. So I have all of them in there too. A lot of the stuff that I've learned over the years to do quick, quick things for me. Um, so make sure you can create your own templates, and you can use that substitution to do quick changes within them. Just as a couple examples of some of the stuff that I've done, um, one of my favorites here is Process Fast Minimal. This won't be very exciting because I don't have a whole lot of stuff running on my computer. Like I just said, it doesn't zoom everything. One thing you notice right away, I've got kill command here. That seems kind of weird, right? Yeah, I got a thumbs up. <laughs> what, do you, what are you doing when you're getting a process list? 99 times out of 100, what are you doing? You're looking for the one bastard query that's running. 
I didn't want to kill that sucker. I got tired of typing in K-I-L-L space. That's how lazy I am. I don't want to type that crap in. So I modified my template to change it to put the kill in there for me. So I find the bad guy, and all I do is control C that sucker, control N for a new query window, and paste it in there and hit execute. A couple of keystrokes, I didn't even have to touch my mouse after the copy, and that sucker's killed. So there's simple little things like that that I want to point out to you, and we forget about these things, right? We go about our day, we go to work, we get our work done, we go home, right? One of the examples I give, and actually I turned down the notepad earlier from one of the vendors, but um, I'll do this every now and then. I'll carry around a notepad with me, and that's my angry notepad. And I'll slap it against something when something irritates me, like, oh, why do I have to type this in again? And then write it down. You do that, and after a week, you pull that notepad out, you're going to have a killer idea of something to solve that's going to be a big time saver for you. And it sounds kind of stupid, but we forget, we forget about the mundane things that we do. They used to annoy us, and we just do them, and we forget about them. But if you get mad about it, you'll actually fix it. So that's my point. So think about these things. Spend a little bit of time thinking about them. Think about how you can solve it so you don't ever have to do it again. That's a big deal to me. Yes, sir. So our team, Dave's team, we do this sort of thing and we create some sort of column and really for special databases and then expand it for anything we need. So we ended up uh, you know, figuring out where on each workstation these template files were stored. Yep. And then we would share a, a team folder of templates we could Great point. Yep. Um, so the question is, uh, the point is about that. Those templates are all stored in a common directory. It's underneath, uh, if I remember it, it's underneath the uh, username, uh, app data, Microsoft, SQL Server Management Studio, 120. You know, it's buried way deep. Um, what my coworker and I did for that, it, well, and the suggestion was here, sorry, I'm recording this, uh, was to, was to um, figure out a way of, are you using source control, or what are you using to share that? Nothing is as, well, we have a, a shared file server. Yep. And what we have is like, we just build a script where everything runs, and Gotcha. So I was additionally lazy. So you have a script that automates all that. Um, you can do symbolic links in Windows. Most people don't use them. Um, you have to run them as run, run it as administrator. So we did the same exact thing. But I went to my directory where that's stored, and I made a symbolic link out to the out to the share. So it was instantaneous. So when I make a change, everybody sees it right away because it's all they, it's made it all common, right? You know. So, so for you, They're stored, yeah, they're stored in a common share out on a shared server, yeah. The caveat is your templates are only loaded at load time um, when, you run, when you launch SMS. So if you and I are doing that and you create a new script, you're like, Nem, I got this thing. It takes care of the SSIS deployment like that. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I got to quit and restart SSMS before I see it in my template browser. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go get a cup of coffee. Yeah, bathroom break time. Yeah, so... Um, but uh, yes, sir. So what I'm discovering is that many, many skill bodies and you are basically taking a share for the public though you the template every skill that you have. Well, so and in my scenario, it's not every workstation. Again, it's one of the ways to be like, oh, it's using an SSNS client. But there's not an inherent to the setup that allows us to say, oh, I created a template. Everybody on the team can have this. And we're having. No, sorry, we're having a little bit of debate at my table at lunchtime. Do you run on the server? Do you run on the workstation? Wherever you run SSMS is basically okay. where, yeah. My second question is, any bug after upgrading your update from 10.0 from 2008 to 2008? Yes, because the templates are all stored in a, in a numbered directory that, has to, that deals with that version. So when you do a major version, so from like 16, like SSMS 16 to 17, mm -hmm. that path would change. Yeah, yeah. You need to go figure it out again. Yeah, yeah. Um, just one second, sir. I'll get you. So I just want to point out, I do, besides that, right now, you can see .hg. I know I'm old school. I'm still using Mercurial. Those of you that are developers that love Git, you can come punch me later on. But uh, for right now, Mercurial works for me. So I do mine underneath source control as well. So, yes, sir, in the back. No. 
No, they'll still be there. Yeah, yeah. Um, even I, I, I'm pretty certain. I will double check this though. Actually, um, I, I'm fairly certain though that um, even if you were to go in and do an uninstall of SSMS, it would leave your custom templates there. It may remove the system installed ones, but anything you've created, it should leave. Now, having said that, do we trust that? Hells no, no. <laughs> Make sure that you are taking your stuff and putting it into a source control repository or copying it somewhere else. Especially if you're like me and you spend a lot of time on these things, I do, I do not want to lose them. Yes, sir. Yeah, for the templates that you're creating, you have to have the other after that you've got an enable No, no. So the question is, where, where those exist? They're they're underneath your users directory. Um, so it, it, it's not they're not in C colon program files. Blah 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 blah. They're in users, your username, app data, local or roaming or wherever. They're 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 in there. So, um, but again, I you know if you, again if you spend any time working on these, back them up, copy them somewhere. Make sure you got a good copy of them somewhere. So. Um, and I don't know, you know, you may look at some of these and find some of these to be completely useless for your purposes. That's fine. Um, I know one of my favorites is estimate times. Um, so if you have a long-running query, it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Better in 2016 on than before. Um, but also, this is great for backups. If you're running a, if you're running the backup in a window, you can see the the updates going along. Does everybody always script as and then run? I do. Not everybody else does. Um, what if you're? What if you have an automated backup system running? You go and you see the backups running. How far along is it? Uh, who knows, right? This as this estimate times will tell you. Will tell you how long it's been running, and how long it has left. Um, so I've got some cool scripts out here. Some of them I've just copied. SP who three, you know, whatever. You go to Brent Ozar's site. You find some great scripts. Go grab them. Throw them into your templates. Otherwise, what's, what's going to happen? Two months later, you're like, I saw a script that fixes that or tells me exactly what's going on. Where was that? And then you go look through your bookmarks and you get distracted by the cat pics because we all do. And then all of a sudden, two hours has gone by and you still haven't solved your problem. But you found some great cat pics. No, so, um, so at any rate, um, all, the, all those little tricks here. And I'll talk about how, we, how, we, how to figure out what you want a template in just a minute here. So where am I at here? Okay, I do, I do. I'm gonna skip this here. I'm a, again, I'm an old Unix hack. I speak regex like it's nothing. Um, I, if and I will just say this: if any of you know regular expressions, you have a you have a heads up on anybody else. Uh, if you come in, I'm a supervisor actually. If you come in and you have a job interview with me and you tell me that you know regular expressions and can prove it, I'll ask you to do so. Um, that's you're gonna be tough. You're gonna be a tough candidate to beat. Um, I'm not going to get into regular expressions. That's a week-long talk about how to maximize and use regular expressions. But it is something I'll show you really quickly here. In SSMS, if you have a query, when you do a find, this little guy right here turns on regular expressions in your find. So if I'm going to look for my name, but I don't remember how to spell it, I can do something like this. SCH dot matches any character, asterisk matches zero or more characters of the previous character, T. So there I can find my name really quickly. I really, really wish that there was a regex function in SSMS, or in, sorry, in SQL Server. Eh, yeah, like kind of works, you know. It does it, it does it, but if you're looking for something very specific, I want a full regex engine. You can do it with some CLRs and some other grunt crap, but it's like, it's like, come on, you gave me R, you gave me Python. Uh, what's next? I don't even know what's in the next version, but I'm like, where's my regular expression? So um, I'm sure they'll eventually get there. All right, so one last thing or two. So you, do you all know about script as script as in SSMS? I see a few hands going up. Just a real quick, if you if you do anything, um, I'm not going to give you the full example here, but uh, if you're going to go do a database backup or database restore or you want to shrink your logs, 
stop and don't shrink your logs. Um, <laughs> go back and think about it. Those who know what I'm talking about are going to chuckle. Yeah, but um, but uh, almost anything that you do in SSMS. In fact, if you go to let's just do something really easy. Like I'm going to create a new database. Right up here, script. So I'm going to type in something here, nam test. I'm not going to run this. I'm just going to go script. That takes the entire, that takes everything that uh, SSMS was going to do and throws it into a TSQL script for you. So if this is something you need to do 10 of, you can copy this, script it all out, have 10 scripts. Be nice and easy. Plus, it's great if you're learning. What the heck is this command doing? Well, script it out. Take a look. Look at the options. Go look at the man page. Now you have an example of what's going to happen with it. So it's always a good learning tool for that. All right. Hidden dark theme. I'll briefly mention this here. How many of us love to have a white screen? <laughs> I hate it. And I actually have a Mac at home too. So, and the Macs love to put white everywhere. I hate I hate white. I hate black on white. Um, a, I'll tell you right, it's not even my presentation. Anybody here know about Flux? See a couple of hands. Yeah. If you if you're light sensitive like I am, go install Flux. It it turns your screen slightly yellow as the and it's all based on the time and where you're at. It's like super cool. Uh, yes, sir. It, it solves the problem. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it's one of those weird things. Like you open up and you're like, ah, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So flux is a good one, but there is a hidden dark theme in SSMS. Uh, it's a little bit of work to get it activated. Um, and the big problem is anytime you do any sort of update, even if it's SSMS 17.1 to 17.2, it'll go blow away this change. You have to redo it again. Luckily, it's pretty easy. Um, I don't actually run it because it does like 90% of the UI elements. There's about 10% that it doesn't, and it's kind of annoying to like try to like all of a sudden it's white and whatnot. Eh. So a little bit jarring, but. Ooh, let me show you this. I moved this up. So how many of you have been working on a script? It's a big, long script. Let me pull up one of my favorites here. I've got um, a backup cursor. So I've got a bunch of variables declared up at the top of my script like a good programmer does. And then I scroll down to the bottom here. And I'm all the way down here and I'm like, I need to know which what was my variable for current current date time. Scroll all the way back up, scroll all the way back down, right? Yuck. All right. This is the hidden magic right here in the corner. How many of you know about this? All right, I guess see a good good half the hands go up. So this is a split view. So you click on this, splits your view. You can have one part of your script showing you the variables, other half showing you your code, and you just scroll back on up to get rid of it. And let me see if I can turn this on real quick. There is. Now a map mode for the scroll bar. I know if you use any other editors, you're used to this. So you can turn your scroll bar into a map bar. Can you all see that? You can see that it's giving me you know, a very micro version of my code in the scroll bar. What's really nice, you can see this big dark bar right here. That's where my cursor's at. If there are any errors in this script, and it's my code so there's no errors, <laughs> um, but if this is your code, haha, just kidding, um, then there will be red bars that will appear along that for wherever their error is at. Um, so that's a great, nice little thing. I don't know if, how many of you use, uh, how many of you use Visual Studio Code? Oh, I see a few hands go up. All right. Visual Studio Code has the same thing. A lot of other editors now have the same thing, that visual scroll bar map. I sometimes like it, sometimes don't, so I don't always turn it on. All right. I've got a big list here of all sorts of plugins that are available for SSMS. The ones in red are pay for, the ones in black are free. You can see this is a list that I created I think two years ago, so I know this even changes. 
a little bit. I actually learned this morning that there is one I need to add for this, and that is that uh, if you have older versions of SMS, there is an extended events plugin that is available. I need to add that to my list here. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of stuff out there. People have been working on this for a while about all the different things you can do. Again, if you're interested in this list, my presentation will be posted up so you can come grab it. I'm only going to be talking about one of these, and it's the best one of all of them, but uh, in my opinion. And I'll mention a few others. But... And that one is, if I can pull it up here, oops. SSMS Tools Pack. Anybody here run SSMS Tools Pack? All right, three or four people. All right. It is a pay for product, it is not free. It is 30 euros, which depending on the month and the date and what Trump embargo has been enacted in the last hour, um, who knows what the euro is going to be, it's typically around 35 to 40 bucks. Um, I actually had my boss balk at that, like, oh, 40 bucks, what do you need? I'm like, dude, what do you spend at a bar on one night? He's like, fine. So, you know, so $40 should not be a big deal for any company to pay for. And it is one of the most useful tools that you can ever get for SSMS. Um, well, I had a question I'll cover right away. One of my favorite things, connection coloring. Now, some of you are like, Nim, why are you telling me to go spend $30 on this? SSMS does connection coloring. Yeah, it does. It's the bottom bar, right? That's it. It does not do coloring. It does not allow you to pick how you want your coloring. This actually has regular expression. Eh, my reg axis again. Regular expression matching on how to do coloring. And it can match on database names. SSMS will only do it by server name. So you can be pretty creative and flexible with how you do your coloring. I want to point out right here what I've got. How many of you do this? Dev is green. QA test is yellow or orange. Prod is red, right? Yeah, I got a couple hands. I had, I had my uh, uh, manager from another group was walking by my desk, and I had RDP'd to like three boxes out of his windows. They're all red. And he stops and he goes, those are production boxes, and just walks away. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, indeed, those are production boxes. You mark it red, the chances of you screwing up and causing headaches is much less. It's just a nice visual indicator. Um, if you're colorblind, I don't know what colors are appropriate, but I'm sure you could probably pick something out as well that will work for you. And here, I'm actually, it's a little bit hard to see. Let me see, can I scroll in just a little bit more here? No. So I've got dot asterisk, colon, 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 colon means database. So this is server name, this is database. So any database that I have that ends in dev, and this just depends on your naming scheme, right? Hopefully, you have a naming scheme where you work. <laughs> if you don't have a naming scheme at work, um, come see me. I have a very large bottle of aspirin, and I will hand that to you. And then we will discuss spending the time to coming up with a naming convention to save all future headaches, right? So um, where I work, it's actually, this is not our naming scheme, but uh, um, but we have we, we base it by host. They always start, ours start PRD, DEV, or um, TST. That's the, the beginning of the host name. The previous place I worked, it was at the end of the host name. Whatever the naming scheme is, doesn't matter. If you can come up with a pattern of some sort, you can use regular expressions and match here. And you'll see here, I've got anything that ends, and this is the database name, anything that ends in dev will be green. Anything that ends in prod will be red. And anything that ends in TST will be yellow. And when I go to my object explorer, you can even see even this little tiny bit. These are all collapsed still. Here's project prod, it's in red. Here's project test, it's in yellow. Here's project dev, it's in green. And if I expand one of those out, that was a bad choice. Here. You can see the red bar expands out. Now from that server, I'm going to create a new query. I like the bar on the left. That's just me. The default is to have the bar across the top. And I think I can even, we can make that. That's the way, typically, that's the default from SSMS Tools Pack. I don't know why, I just like the left. Uh, for me, it works. Whatever works for you is fine. And But you'll notice 
This bar here, you can configure the width of it, this location, top, left, right, bottom, but it also colors in the, the tab up top. And this just came out in the very latest version of SMS Tools Pack. It's like a week or two old. You can now right click on that and I can select something, I can select single use color. So if I decide just for this tab, I want it, I want it purple, I can come in here and select purple and hit OK and it'll change the side for me just for that one. I don't really have a use case for that. Like I don't know when I'm going to do that. But well, that's nice it's there. So I do make heavy use of the regular expressions and the patterns that are available here so that my hosts are colored correctly. I'm actually really picky. I don't like to use a regex for all my dev boxes. I have it there just in case I get a new connection. It's already pre-colored, but I actually will pick very slightly different shades of, of green so I know exactly which dev server I'm on. Um, that's a little that's a little picky and anal. I don't expect everybody else to be like that, but uh, but you have the option of doing that if you want to. Um, and you can do some other stuff in here too, like uh, you can create some custom text. It doesn't work well if you use the left or the right because it has to write it kind of funny. Um, I never bother with any of that stuff. The color is the main thing for me. All right, my next favorite: local history. How many times have you done this? You're working away in SMS, and you click the close window, and this window pops up. Do you all save your files? No, no, we don't. We're lazy, right? Just click no. Ah, I'll figure it out later. <laughs> well, with SMS Tools Pack, it actually stores all this stuff for you. So I quit out of SMS. I'm going to relaunch it here. Hopefully, since it was just running, it won't take a minute. Um, should be fairly quick. I have this button right now. Restore last session. That's part of SMS Tools. I'll click that. It's actually one for some connection information. Wee magic. It's pulling up every single window that I had. So not only does it save sessions, your last session, if you go in there and look, I can go look to see what was I doing on April or on August 15th. That's the, that's the window in the career that I had open that day. Let me see if I can find a quick interesting one here. No, those are all boring. Here we go. This one's got three. So here I had three tabs open. If I want to, and I don't want to screw up my presentation, but if I want to, I can just double click right now and it'll open up those three tabs. So it's not just your last session, it's all your sessions, um, which is a big lifesaver. Next thing that it does in the same dialog, SQL history. I have every query that I have run since about, I want to say, I think it was August or September of 2012 until today I saved. Every single one of them. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> it's only about, because uh, um, it's all text, you know, and so, well, at least the backup is only like 200 megs. The database itself is around 600 megs. Um, and I will, I will admit, I moved to the dark side. I'm a supervisor, so I don't do as much SQL as I used to. But, uh, um, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. Um, and when I was a manager, I also required all of my staff to run this. This was mandatory. They had to turn this on on their SSMS um, to do local search history. Yes, sir? You can use it in multiple ways. So auditing, yes. I For me, it was CYA, uh, cover your ass. Um, so here's the scenario. Database broken. All right. Well, first thing, get your backup, do whatever you need to do to get your stuff working again, right? Next is triage. Why did this happen? So something happened on some day at some time. Usually we can get pretty close to that, right? Um, with... The query storage, you can now tell, if I went to my, each of my developer's workstations, I could tell who ran what at exactly what time. 
and be able to triage that and figure it out. What, what happened when it happened, right? For me, this is much more actually about um, the cover of your ass aspect of, I know I fixed that last year. What did I do last year to fix it? This problem comes up once per year or once per quarter, or once per half, half year, whatever. How many of you remember that stuff? I don't. I get too much stuff going in and out of my desk. There's no way I'd remember that stuff. <clears throat> By having this search history here, you, um, you can, it's really easy. I don't know. I'm just going to do like a select, which is a stupid thing to search for. But, uh, um, but anyway, it'll do a search, and it'll show you um, exactly what query it ran. And you can get pretty complex with this. There are two ways that this stores things. Uh, I don't want to search. I want to go to settings. It will, by default, store to your local workstation. Great, right? Fine. Um, what if you have lots of people running queries all against the same stuff? If you want to, you can centralize that by using um, database saving. So I actually do both. Um, every query I run gets stored locally, which I somewhat ignore. Um, I use my database um, query store much more. Um, and I can do nice selects out of that because it's just a table of data, right? So I can do selects from that to look for the stuff that I'm looking for. And I can do nice complex like with a bunch of percentage signs in there with whatever search terms I'm looking for. And I can find, I've always been able to find the query that I'm looking for. Um, and then you go, ah, that's, that's, that's something I should remember how to do. Now what should I do with it? Make a template out of it. Yes. So once you have your histories going, not only are you saving your butt from any potential problems, but if you go out to that and you go like, man, I got to look this stupid thing up every quarter. No, I'm going to make a template out of that. And that way you know where to find it right away. And it's amazing if you go out there and just look at it. It's actually kind of fun just to go look at, oh, what was I doing two or three months ago or whatever. And sometimes you look at it and go, wow, I thought that was last year. And that was two months ago, right? So you get some temporal growth. Yes, sir? So can you say as a manager see what somebody else did two years ago? If they've been running this long enough, yes. I, I will say that the, the database storage method, um, it's uh, we've tried doing it. So like, hey, let's have everybody store their queries to this central server. Well, if, if they're at home and they're on a VPN and they're just trying to do something else, the, and then it barfs on them, right? So um, so we, we had problems with that. So we, we haven't tried to do that yet. Um, but what would be fairly easy to do would be to set up a local database where everybody, where, wherever anybody's running SSMS. Um, hopefully, they're, hopefully they're also running a database on there if they're doing development work or whatnot. Have them store their queries to that and then do something like a, like a PowerShell job or do like a scheduled task that, uh, oddly enough, Mondays at noon. Um, Fridays at noon are bad too because people leave for the afternoon. But Mondays at noon, almost always everybody has their computer we all have laptops. Almost everybody always has their laptop sitting in their dock Mondays at noon, and they go off to lunch. Um, that's been the best time for us to do that kind of stuff. So that's what I would do, is I would just have something that then ran and then aggregate it all together somewhere somewhere centrally, you know. And you can do things, too. I mean, it's obvious. I mean, it's again, it's a table. It's storing data. If you had a bunch of big queries that ran through, just go out to there and delete them out of that table. Delete them out of the history if you don't want to see them anymore. Um, one big thing to worry about um, especially with GDPR around the corner, PII. If you are ever dealing with anybody's private data, make for darn sure you go and delete them out of that, out of there, or turn that functionality off. Otherwise, you're going to be in big trouble. So um, you want to be, you know, keep that in mind. Everything is being stored. If you type in a social security number, that's now in your stored database and on your local hard drive if you're using local storage as well. So it can be a big problem. So. A little common sense, though. If you're dealing with private data, you're, you all should be used to this. You need to be careful whenever you're dealing with it. All right. If any of you noticed, when I do a new query here, this I just did a control N. This kind of looks like it loaded up a template for me already, right? This is the new query. You can specify when you do a new query what that should be with SSMS tools. You can see this little guy here. We talked about this with templates. I'll do a Control Shift M. It's going to ask me for a title and a description. 
I, I put that into all my comments. So, SQL Saturday demo. In this case, I'm just going to be lazy and just copy it and put that in the description as well. But That'll fill it in for you. But you also notice a couple of things. Vagabond here, that is my workstation name. Nem is my name. That's my username. Linux SQL. Yes, I am running a VM running Linux with SQL Server on it. That's the SQL Server that I'm connected to right now in this window. Um, I have my date. and You can see that is a highly accurate date. It is now 3.09, but it was 3.08 when I hit Control N. I put a nice little uh, Creative Commons license on there. That's up to you to do. But I have a nice descriptive header that's in every single one of my queries. Because when I do a Control N, that gets pasted in for me. And one thing I want to note, you see the cursors right here? That's exactly the spot where I want to start typing. I do some things like I see, hey, are we in a transaction? Okay, and then roll out of that transaction because I probably did a Control Shift C or I did a break or stop my query running at some point because I was doing something stupid. So roll back out of that, start a new transaction. I like to name my transactions. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, and then I always do a rollback and a commit. And when I actually want this to actually commit, I can comment out the rollback. So every time I do a new query, I can automatically just type in delete star from table, and I'm fine. Because every single one of my queries does a rollback for me automatically. It's always in every single one of my queries. Unless I accidentally, you know, if I accidentally did this, that would be bad too. But, you know, it's, just, it's always in there. And doo -doo -doo, new query template here in SSMS tools. I'll explain these in a minute. But you can see this is, this is basically my template. The key is, too, whenever you edit this, you want to push your cursor. You can just see the blinking right there. You want to put your cursor exactly where you want it to appear when you, when you do a new query. And it'll remember that cursor position. So it's always in the, in the right spot. Now, what are these guys up here? Those are global search and replace expressions. So a lot of tools, um, not, just, not just SMS tools pack, but a lot of them will let you do macros like SSF, select star from. There's a bunch of tools that do that, do the, that, do that sort of thing. Um, but what SSMS tools does is it allows you to create global variants of that. So I don't have to hit a tab or an enter or anything. If I do vertical bar, current time vertical bar, it replaces it with the current time. And I can use, if I can find one here, eh, that one's okay. Yeah, here we go. I can use SQL to generate the output of those commands. There's a, you know, it comes to the free, you know, pre-canned ones, username, whatever. But if I want something specific, if I want to know my connection name, if I want to know, I don't know, actually, uh, how many of you deal with clustered environments, right? I don't know if it would be helpful. It doesn't really make that much difference. But if I wanted to, I can figure out which cluster I'm running on, and I can put that in my comment header. Again, I don't know if that's useful or not, but that's something that you have the power to do with this. So that dynamically uses the same connection that the window that you're in when you hit it? Correct. Yep. Using. Yep, yep. So, for example, here, I actually, you know what, I'll I don't have my database name that I'm connected to in there. Otherwise, if I connect to a different database, I could easily, that's actually what I'm missing from this. Like, what database was I connected to? Um, I will say, I don't usually include that in this because when I look at my SSMS history, it records my connection for me as a part of those, of, of, that, of that history file. So I usually don't record that myself, but that'd be something you could easily do. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't know how many of you have dealt with the um, effective user versus actual user and whatnot, and you can query those separately too. So that's something that if you deal with, I don't have to deal with it or I haven't dealt with it. Um, but if you want to, you could query that out and put that in here as well. All right, I got, what, five minutes left, ten minutes left? Um, export to SQL, that's just an obvious one. Um, I'm not going to go through a lot of these things, but it does a lot of stuff. Um, the author for this is great. He comes out with, with updates often. Um, it's a great, great tool. Now, how many of you noticed? Can I control Z this? No. All right. So when I went off and did this create database, I 
I did a new database, I scripted it out. Now, how many of you care about what your code looks like? There are not enough hands that went up for that. <laughs> you all should care about readable code. My guys hate me. They hate me. I, I, I Literally, they hate me because I am super, super anal about the way code should look. This code, for example, is wrong. Why? Because it has parameters all in one line. I hate this crap. Why? I'm scrolling back and forth. It doesn't line up. It's not. There's no predictive w way for me to look at where that's at unless I name all my databases eight characters or something stupid like that, right? So one of the best tools out there is Poor Man's TSQL Formatter. I was really nervous. Development stopped on this. It got picked back up again. So it is being actively developed. One of the great things about this is if you're a super nerd like me, you can run this via the command line. Yep. Yep. Everything is formatted. Yes. Exactly. The yes. Same way. Doesn't it just makes you happy in a happy place? Yeah. It's it's the best. Once you find it, it's the best. now here's my problem is I have developers where I tell them go install this. It's free. Set it up like this, and then you click on one thing and you're done. Do they do it? It's the one exact no. that I put in the source control. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So let me get. So here's the example. And one, one of the other things is I always have this argument about trailing commas. How many of you like trailing commas? Nobody. Oh, a couple. Of, uh, leading commas. Yeah. Woo! Leading commas. Oh, you see, you trailing comma people, you're losing. Good. <laughs> good. Good. No. If you want to, you can select trailing commas. You deselect it, and it doesn't do trailing commas. And in one keystroke here, well, I have it mapped funnily, but I'm, so I'm just going to hear. So tools, format TSQL code, click, bang. I'm done formatting my code. That's how tough that was. Um, there are other tools out there that I won't be able to get that much into. I will briefly mention them. SQL Complete, which is a product by Dev, uh, is it Dev, Dev Art. Dev Art, yep. Um, they have a formatting tool as well. If you like that one and it gets the job done, use that one. If you like Poor Man's TSQL Formatter, use Poor Man's TSQL Formatter. Again, I like it because, like this gentleman mentioned, it's easy to use. I use mine on the command line. I go through, once my guys check in their code, I've got a script that goes in, checks it out, runs Poor Man's TSQL Formatter, checks it back in again. That way I know it's going to be... What's that? Yes, yeah, yeah. And, and to me, it's and they're like, why does this look different? I'm like, why? Because you did it wrong the first time, and I fixed it for you. <laughs> That's why it looks different. <laughs> so anyway, uh, well, the other thing was SQL Complete that I really like is it it it, it is a replacement for IntelliSense that works, right? Because we all know IntelliSense. Every time you want IntelliSense to tell you what what it's doing, it comes up with the right answer right away, right? No, no, the thing barely ever works, right? Sometimes it just doesn't even come up at all, uh, whatnot. But at any rate, um, SQL Complete is like an IntelliSense that works. Um, let me go to a database here, and I'm just going to do select star from, and I'm going to instantly get, uh, man, it's, it's doing a weird thing there. So, all right, this actually puts icons in to tell me what are tables. And when I click on a table... I go back over here and I want to select a column. Come on. There we go. There are my columns. And it even tells me which ones have indexes on them. So I have nice little, nice little icons. Um, and it's faster and it always, it just seems to always work. Every now and then, of course, if you make a big change, like you just dropped five tables and added 20 new ones. Yeah, you got to go up and hit SQL complete and go refresh local cache. It's not constantly watching everything that's going on, right? Um, but if you do that, it'll know about everything that's that's happening and go on from there. All right, I am just about out of time, and I want to leave some questions. Time for questions, too. Um, so real quick, um, I will mention SQL search. That's by Redgate. Awesome. Definitely go get that one. It does not search data and tables. It searches schema. But that includes stored procedures, database, or that includes uh, uh, views, table definitions, 
um, everything along the, along those lines. So if you, how many of you come across a synonym in a database or some asshole put a synonym in your database, right? Uh, I want you to just grab them and slap them. Don't use synonyms in your database. They just cause confusion, right? But so I'm looking at this query and I'm like, this guy is selecting from this table and I look at the tables and it's not there. It's not a complex query. There's no view. I'm like, WTF, what is going on here? SQL search, search for that. Oh, the guy put a synonym in, 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 into his table there. So you can find stuff like that. It's a very valuable tool. Um, SQL Code Guard is one that I loved, past tense. Um, I'm hoping that it will come, come around again. Um, SQL Code Guard will let you do great things like, um, how many of you put semicolons at the end of your SQL statements? Uh, yeah, I do too, right? So uh, if you've used Oracle or MySQL or anything else, semicolons at the end of the statements. SQL Server is like, eh, we'll let you not do that, right? If you go look at any documentation on a Microsoft site, what's at the end of every statement? A semicolon. So they haven't announced it yet, but it's one of these things where eventually they're just going to say, yep, that's required. I like it because it just, to me, looks like clean code. Um, how many of you insist when you do um, an if block or a while block, or if block is the big one, that you do a begin and an end? Even if it's for one command, yes, you run into way too many headaches if you don't do that. SQL Code Guard will look at your code and tell you, you have an if statement without a begin or an end on this line. Um, and again, it works on the command line, so you can parse through a whole bunch of files and generate a big report off of all the problems. Um, unfortunately, Redgate, well, I shouldn't say this, Redgate bought them. Um, they're now including it. They say it's still free, and it is if you can find the right download spot for it, but they haven't upgraded it. It doesn't work with SQL, uh, with SMS version 17 yet. They say that they're going to work on it, but it's one that I just I just missed because it was a great, great tool for figuring stuff out. Uh, we'll skip this. Um, yes, many much stuff about SQL tool pack. You see, I give this so, so much that I don't even uh, bother with it. So, all right, SQL Operation Studio, really quickly here, just so you can look at it. So, this is something that, uh, that's the wrong thing. <clears throat> um, Microsoft demoed this last year at the uh, past summit, and I did double click on it, I believe. We'll, wait, we'll let it sit here for a minute. So, um, I think I asked before, how many of you use Visual Studio Code? We had, a, we had quite a few hands go up, right? Visual Studio Code, I, I really like Visual Studio Code. Um, it's really nice because, like, let's say you open up something weird. Like, you just opened up uh, uh, a JSON data, which isn't weird, but it'll say, hey, do you want to install the JSON module? I'll format this and colorize it for you. I'm like, yes. Reload. Poof. Good-looking JSON, right? Nice and quick. Um, my problem is I'm used to Notepad++. Notepad++ launches as soon as you double click on that sucker, right, or whatever. You say, I want Notepad++, and it's like, what? I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting on you, you know? Um, <laughs> you launch Visual Studio Code, and it's like, did I click on it? I think I did. Uh, well, I'll wait a little bit. In fact, actually, I don't know if I did double click on this one, so we'll run this again. Oh, there it comes up. All right. Um, so Visual Studio Code, they are working on it. It is a little bit slow. Um, it's tough. I really like the power of Visual Studio Code. It is better than Notepad++ in a lot of ways. But if you're going to edit a text file real quick, you just can't beat Notepad++. It just works, right? How, how can you compete with something that works? All right, so any of you that have used Visual Studio Code will recognize this. This looks very similar, right? We've got our kind of sidebar. It's the same thing. This box here has our extensions. We have extensions. This is all good, right? I was really hoping when they announced this and showed this that this was going to be that SQL Operation Studio was going to be basically a plug-in to Visual Studio Code. And that's the way they even talked about it a little bit. For those of you who have mucked around with Visual Studio Code, the other thing that's nice about it is it's multi-platform. Runs on Mac, runs on Linux. Same exact thing. Same preferences, same everything. Same thing with SQL Operation Studio. If you have a Mac or Linux box, you can run SQL Operations Studio and manage your uh, your instances with it. Um, I wouldn't very really recommend it right now, especially because it's pretty rough. Um, it doesn't do a whole lot. Um, it's really slow. Um, let me see. Connect this. Connect. It has gotten better. Yep, yep. 
There are some really nice things in it because it's got ex it's got export to JSON built into it. It finally has export to Excel. Now I'm not an Excel fan, but I have to deal with the business part of my of my work, right? They call me up. I need this data. Well, I'm fine with a TSV file or a CSV file. Actually, JSON works pretty good for me too. Uh, they don't seem to like it so much when I just send them raw text and expect them to figure it out, right? So we have to deal with Excel, um, and that is built in um, into um, SQL Operation Studio. It does a little weirdness. I don't quite like the way it does some of this stuff. So here's this is this is a result of two queries. Um, they were both pretty short. Um, but SSMS, I don't know. I'm just maybe just maybe I'm just an old fuddy duddy and I'm used to SSMS. Um, but the way it produces output, I like better than this. And actually, there's even an update here now, so I'll do that later. But but I am excited about Operation Studio. Um, they just added in um, the ability to manage agent jobs, which was something fairly new for it before. You could do it if you knew the TSQL for it, right? Uh, but now that's part of the GUI itself. Um, they're making good strides in it. I, I, I just like the concept of being open, being multi-platform, being inclusive. That just seems like a good thing to me. Anything in any of these tools that lets you do control enter? Just run the yeah. <laughs> um, No, but I, uh, well, I'm trying to think here. So one of the things that I do, and I, uh, you, you may have noticed it here, when I when I'm in uh, when I'm in SSMS, and I want to connect to a database. So how do you get up to this box up here? You guys know? It's control U. Control U brings you up to this box, right? I hate doing that. Control U for me does that. And I'm using Auto Hotkey to do that. So with Auto Hotkey, you can script anything you want to. So if you want to do Control, it'd be, basically you you would tell Auto Hotkey to tell SSMS, hey, when somebody does a control enter, remap that to a control E, because control E is to execute execute the job. So. Does it do the whole, does the whole page, right? Like no, it does the whole page. Well, but um, there are, yeah, there are a bunch of tools that will do the, will do just the selected cool. snippet of it, too. I'm trying to remember, off the top of my head, I can't remember, I apologize. I know that there are tools that do that. So, no, that is really nice to be able to do that. Um, yes? So if you purchase this tools pack, it has to be company-wide, right? And it's not like you can just ask the department models to buy it for you and your desktop. I don't know. Who, who are the people in your company that you're using SSMS? Everybody? Just the developers? You know. All yeah, the users, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, they might, they might not need it, though. So I, I, I would just go with your database administrators and your developers. Um, <laughs> but... There is, and there is site licensing for it. I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head. I apologize. But there, there is, you can do company purchases and whatnot. And actually, even the individual license that, like, I have, the $35 one, I can go deregister that and re-register it somewhere else. Or if my laptop just drops and dies, I can just tell it to re-register it to me. So I can move it if I want to. So it's not stuck on a box. So for $35, you on one desktop or yes. Yep. Yeah, one desktop for you. So I have two computers. I bought two. I bought two licenses. Yeah. All right. And I think my time is just about done here. Everybody awake? All right. <laughs> Any questions? All right. Oh, you have multiple questions. All right. So uh, save the applause. Yeah. Yes, sir. Up right here. I'm wondering if there's anything, and I'm not sure if maybe it's a PowerShell or Python thing you have to do, but I'm trying to find a solution for we get an email that's a script, and basically I'm doing the same thing over and over. I'm selecting the database name, I run it, I switch environments to Dell, then I switch to test, test two. Have you used SQL command mode? You know what I'm talking about with that? Nope. All right. So SQL command mode, you can script that all out. Um, so if you go to the query, turn on SQL command mode, um, you can do fun things. Uh, anybody remember? Yeah, it's, the, it's connect. So you can do colon connect, um, DB name, use, you know, use DB update, whatever you need to do, and then you just do another connect here to db name dash dev or something like that. So this is so you, you, in one script you can connect to four different hosts. 
Is that helping to answer your question or no? You're looking like no, so tell me no. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I can play around with it. It's just, we just get a script that's basically email generated, and then we have to run it in all these different environments. And well, that sounds like fun. just a registered server group. Yeah. Run it everywhere at one time. All right. She used to know about registered servers? No, awesome. So registered servers, this is something your DBA should be setting up for you. Unfortunately, I don't have one set up on my test box here, but uh, my production machine, when my developers come out here, they go to the central, central, manager, central management service underneath registered servers, and underneath there I've got dev, prod, QA, whatever. You create a group with the servers that you need to run on that script. You right-click on the group and say new query, and it opens up a special window that whatever you run on it will run on all those instances. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be. You need to know your shit. You better be super careful when you're doing that. And the, and you need to have all the databases need to have the same name and whatnot. You know. That's, yeah. Yeah. I still think what you what we could solve for you is something along the lines with using using a SQL command along with. Um, you know, I guess it depends on these emails that you're getting. Is there just three different things that are different in them, or is the whole query different every time? No, it's the same. It's the same script. It's just we're just basically having to basically go and you know connect to different servers. Yeah. And then the database is the same. But it's running in our development or you know system. Yeah. The other thing I'll tell you is. Is that you can you can say. Yep. From this script on this connection, and then. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can either generate with PowerShell, run it with PowerShell, or you can yeah, generate a batch I'm script. Yeah, you should learn how to do it. It's a huge, awesome skill to be able to have. So, to look at something and go, that'll take me two minutes, when everybody else is like, that'll take me three hours. You know, so. <laughs> Sorry, Peter, you had another question? Uh, a comment. Sure. Comment is, I've used years. History and snippets. Yep. History and snippets, right? That's what you said, right? Those are the two that yep. Um, the is that being yes, and well, I'm not sure because they just came out with like um, this gentleman here was asking about this too. It's like Azure Data Studio just came out. When I saw that, I, I thought it was, when I saw that, I didn't think it was SOS just renamed. I thought it was a different product, but I could be wrong. Because it seemed like, it seemed to me, you know, of course, Azure's the big keyword. Hey, let's all use the cloud. It's just other people's computers, people. Come on, it's not. Oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh, cloud. No. Uh, but, uh, um, yeah, I, I thought it was a separate product, though. I could be wrong, though. I, d I did not dive into it. All right, I'm over my time. I thank you all for staying a little bit later. Really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And, again, come out later on, download my stuff, go look at it, email me with questions. I'd really like them. Oh, thank you. And if you don't want to fill out one of these, you can go online and fill out a form, too. That's fine, too. I don't mind. We have a presentation. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I have a smooth drive back. Oh, thank you. <laughs>